Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to part three in our COP26 Tiny Explainer series. Burning coal is said to be the single largest contributor to climate change in the world. And thus, phasing out coal and replacing it with clean electricity is one of the really big ticket items needed to address global climate emissions. Mitchell Beer of the Energy Mix talks to Banu Jacamar about coal and clean electricity, COP26, and Canada's actions. Good day and welcome to this edition of COP26 Tiny Explainers. I'm Mitchell Beer, publisher of the Energy Mix, and I'm speaking with Binu Jayakumar, Director of Clean Energy at the Pembina Institute in Calgary. Binu, Thursday is Energy Day at COP26, and two of the top issues are a global coal phase-out and a decarbonized power grid. How is Canada addressing those issues in Glasgow? Hi, Mitchell. Um, Yeah, it's fantastic to see the focus on coal at the COP this year, given that coal is the single largest cause of climate change. And I'd say so far, Canada's leadership on coal has been commendable. You know, internationally, Canada has been co-chairing the Powering Past Coal Alliance, and that has achieved a lot through the coalition. You know, it has supported the launch of UN FCCC's No New Coal Global Compact, which now has 44 countries. Uh, It's also supporting a lot of the work on um, phasing out global coal finance. So it's making a lot of progress. Canada also made several commitments at COP26 related to the phase out of coal. But Canada itself has also made a landmark announcement, and this may be the first of its kind. It's banning thermal coal exports by 2030. Now, we do need to accelerate this ban, but it sends a strong signal to industry, and it also sets a good example for other countries to follow. I think the other remarkable commitment from Canada so far at COP has been around its commitment to contributing up to $1 billion to the Accelerating Coal Transition Program by Climate Investment Funds. So beyond the working with other countries on that, what else uh, will it take to deliver on a decarbonized grid um, after Canadian delegates and everybody else get home from uh, from the COP? Yeah, a lot of work to do, but I should say um, as an environmental movement too, we should take a bit of time to celebrate Canada's progress to date. Uh, domestically on coal power. We're actually on track to phase out coal by 2030 in Canada, with the exception of one plant in New Brunswick. And um, I actually looked to Alberta to see how successfully we have done this. You know, Alberta houses over half of Canada's electricity emissions, and it has shown the most progress. If you and I were having this conversation a decade ago, Mitchell, uh, Alberta would be still operating a plant as far out as 2061. And right now, Alberta is on track to phase out coal by 2023. That's four decades in advance. A lot of of success to to speak to on phasing out coal power. But then this raises the urgency of what replaces coal. Investment decisions that we make today will shape what our grid looks like for the next 30 to 40 years. So coal is going, going, and soon to be gone. But what we replace it with is pretty important. So what we need in Canada is a strong implementation plan on how we get to that net zero target for the grid by 2035. Canada is actually behind its peers in deploying renewable uh, energy. We're actually at the bottom four of the G20 countries in terms of wind and solar growth. So there's a lot we can do in in that field. I'd say practically, the federal government needs to really implement strong policies like the clean electricity standard, uh, continue getting more stringent carbon pricing going. Um, That'll enable the growth of renewables and also limit our gas risk. We also need to see infrastructure investments into transmission and storage. Something that I think is not always clear to people um, outside, those of us, I should say, outside Alberta, is mm-hmm. that there is so much activity going on in your province. You, you keep hearing about these really impressive solar and wind projects going on in Alberta. Mm-hmm. To what extent is a message beginning to land with people in your province that by their own experience, by what they can see right in front of their eyes, the shift to a decarbonized grid is about opportunity and gain, not loss and pain. That's a really good question, Mitchell, and a really important one. So it's really important to have the buy-in of 
citizens. And I think we're there, like in Alberta, two thirds of Albertans actually want to see the provincial government commit to a net zero uh, economy. The message that's starting to resonate is the opportunities for jobs growth and investment that comes with the transition to a clean energy grid. Uh, so, for example, a lot more businesses now have ESG goals. So they want to operate in jurisdictions that have a clean electricity so that they can uh, take advantage of that when they're doing their corporate reporting. So that's one reason. Um, low, most renewables are actually lower cost than coal and gas. In fact, by 2030, projections are that it's going to be cheaper to install new renewables than to continue running existing coal. So that is another advantage of the low cost of clean energy. What's in it for a premier like Jason Kenney or Scott Moe to get on board and help Canada keep his promises? Yeah, uh, and Mitchell, I'd, I'd reiterate that economic growth lens again. Uh, a lot of leading industry companies have net zero by 2050 targets. So paying attention to that, um, banks and investors are continuing to invest more in clean energy solutions than in fossil fuels. And you've seen a lot of announcements even coming out through COP26 on this. So I'd advise governments to pay attention to where those investment funds are going. It's all about getting on board with where the investment is going around the world. And then, yeah, bringing it back to people and communities, uh, you know, the coal exit is actually a really good example to see the impact it has on communities that depend on coal mining and workers that depend on those jobs for their livelihoods. You need to have a transition plan. You need to be able to provide jobs in other emerging sectors that are going to be stronger and last longer. Okay, Binu, thank you so much. We're going to leave it there. Um, folks, you will find our series of COP26 Tiny Explainer videos on the Green Energy Futures YouTube site and text summaries of these interviews at theenergymix.com. Thanks to Michael Beer of The Energy Mix and Banu Jacomar of the Pemina Institute for tackling coal phase-out and how electricity grids transition to clean energy. Coal may have been king once upon a time, but sometimes lost in discussions about the climate crisis are the huge strides Canada has made through Alberta and Ontario phasing out coal in a relatively short period of time. And despite the high deployment of hydropower in Ontario, Quebec, Manitoba and British Columbia, and a solar and wind power boom now underway in Alberta, Canada still lags behind other G20 nations in the new deployment of clean electricity generation. Thanks for listening and follow our coverage at theenergymix.com and greenenergyfutures.ca. For COP26 Tiny Explainers, I'm David Dodge. Oh, my God.